great. All right. We are ready to move on to our next speaker, who is an Austrian LARP designer, also a lecturer and researcher at the University College of Teacher Education, Vienna. She's been designing LARPs for more than 20 years, and she has given workshops and talks on LARP and EduLARP for LARPers and LARP designers, and also for teachers, university lecturers, and other interested people. Workshop design is an essential part of LARP design. To talk about workshop design from the perspective of an education specialist, please welcome Olivia Fischer. Thank you. Yeah, as you said, Jörg, uh, workshop design is a really essential part of LARP design. And for me, it's, uh, that's where the title comes from. It's a bit like, uh, you know, from Narnia, where the Pevensi children, they have to go to the wardrobe. Also the first title of the book, of the first book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. They have to go to the wardrobe to get into the magical land. And that is basically um, what I also see uh, that workshops are doing. They guide your participants, your players, into your magical land, your vision. And there are a lot of good workshops out there, and I've seen people picking and grabbing workshops from here and there, and that can be a good idea, but I think it's not, not that simple, at least if you, if you look at it from, from an educational perspective, like when, where, you, where you think about how do I instruct people to do what I want to do. And uh, today I want to share some thoughts with you, uh, maybe some are really obvious for you, Maybe not, uh, but all of these thoughts are thoughts that I think are really helpful to think about when you are designing workshops for your LARP. So first, I th and this is the thing I, I want to talk the longest about, the most important for me, is you really need to figure out prerequisites, requirements that are necessary for your specific LARP. And that is actually quite tricky because often we only know what players would have needed after they have played it for the first time, so it's often useful to you know, do some reflection after the first run. But uh, to help you a bit with that and what to think about, uh, I have four points here, what you, what you want to think about. There are usually four things that you uh, want to think about when designing workshops. There are emotional prere prerequisites for your players. So these are things that might help your players to feel safe at your LARP. It those are things that might help them to feel brave or anything else uh, that is specifically necessary for your LARP. So, so think about what do my players need to be in a good emotional space uh, to start my LARP. Then we have uh, LARP flow prerequisites. Those are requirements or tools mechanics, techniques, calibration tools, whatever, for your players to, to manage the way through your LARP. So, for example, calibration tools, as I said, but it can also be things that help them steer their experience, face their experience, stuff like this. Then we have portrayal prerequisites, something that has to do with bringing your world alive. Is there something that players need? to make the world that was in your minds, like as a, as a design team, that players need to bring that world alive and also to navigate that world. Uh, is there something that they need to portray their role, their character really well? And also really important, is there something that they need to help others, support others in their portrayal of their characters? So those are questions you might want to ask yourself. And then last but not least, of course, um, kickoff prerequisites. Maybe you want to do something to help players get into their character in the right way. Uh, maybe you don't need all of them at your LARP, but those are things you might want to think about. And it's, as I said, it's often really not so easy to really figure out what they need for your LARP. And I want to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. So let's think about... Um, um, for example, erotic LARPs. I think that's the, the most basic and most, most simple uh, example for that. So 
we all agree that we need something players need to feel safe and to calibrate uh, erotic scenes and to manage the LARP flow in scenes like that. And so all erotic LARPs have something about safety workshops and how and uh, why to use uh, safety tools, safety mechanics, calibration techniques to decrease or increase something. Um, and often people already know those things. And what you r and I'm not saying you shouldn't practice it. Please do it. But there is something else you might want to focus on. So for playing a LARP like that, your players might something to build trust with others, something to feel comfortable. So these are things that you maybe want to talk about as well, or maybe you want to workshop a workshop about as well. Um, another example is for me um, portraying a subgroup. That's also something that happens often in LARPs. Like you have, a, you have a group, and then a typical workshop I've seen is something like stand in a circle, tell each other your names, maybe talk to your, uh, talk to your one relation, something like that. And that's a good thing, because people have to know each other's names and stuff. But, you know, when you want to have a cool group in a LARP, that group needs a group identity. So you might want to invest some time and have people workshop stuff like common shared memories, special habits, maybe a special greeting, stuff like that, something that builds up their group identity. You might even want to have them LARP out uh, a, a shared memory or, so, or whatever. Yeah? So it's not, sometimes the obvious thing isn't the thing that really gets you where you want to be. Or another example I also often see is when it comes to fellowship or, uh, or conflict, that you do status lines and you have people line up and you do one line after another, you know, the rich versus the poor and the, the smart kids versus the nerds and stuff like that. And you switch between the lines uh, and the switches go quickly. And honestly, nobody can remember such quick switches. So the status lines are a good idea. But what you actually want to do is you want them to work with that line. So you maybe want them to find somebody else in another section of the line, yeah, each player, and have them talk about what they do with that different places during the LARP if something can arise out of that. So I think there is a lot of good workshops around and you really need to think, is that exactly what tackles what I need at my LARP? And then maybe you just make it fit. Okay, I think I should maybe go to some other things as well before my time is up. So I will now give you some 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 tips or advice that are rather I see I say general. That's something we also do when we give lectures or when teachers teach. Um, Something uh, that you should keep in mind is that you should accommodate to different learning uh, styles and preferences. So maybe you think doing a workshop is the thing for everybody. But maybe some people learn better and understand better what you want to show them and teach them for the LARP if you give it to them in advance, in advance maybe as a video so that they can watch it on their own, in their own pace. Or maybe you give it in written form so that they can read it. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to do all that work, but maybe you help people who have another approach to learning and experiencing things if you, could, if you cater to different needs. Um, another one, and that is a real classic one, use simple language. Yeah, and, and maybe simple, clear sentences, not too much of vocabulary, make it easy, make it short, and be organized. So if you're like me who tends to forget something, maybe you want to bring something to look up and to see if you're still sticking to your, to your plan. Um, if you have something that is really, really, really necessary for your LARP, like a D1 meta technique that is the most important, or the one thing that they have to remember. Don't do it only once. Give them a chance to practice whatever that might be uh, on different occasions and in different settings. It really helps, and also with different partners. Not practice it. Don't practice it only with one person, but maybe change it, change the settings or something like that. And be transparent. So if you have a workshop and you clearly know why you're doing it, 
Yeah, if you have maybe maybe you have something in mind, a scene where you need specifically speci specifically that knowledge or skill or whatever or that you're practicing, just tell them. Don't make a mystery out of it. Uh, it helps you to learn and to memorize something if you really need the purpose. Okay, and also of course consider your participants' back, uh, backgrounds. So maybe. Uh, you have people from, from different cultural um, backgrounds, different social backgrounds. Uh, take that in mind, use simple language, use, use vocabulary that is in your everyday language. Even if, you're, if you, even if you are doing a LARP with all native speakers, there might be differences. So maybe just stick to, uh, to when it comes to instructions, of course, different, uh, different thing is uh, what happens in-game, but when it comes to instructions, stick to simple language. Um, and then something that is really important to me, and I hope I don't step on anybody's toes when I say that. I find it super creative and also cool in a way that a lot of designers, and I've done that myself, I'm also one of those, come up with their own calibration tools. Yeah, like they have their own safe words which fit the setting to de-escalate or escalate a scene. A scene. Uh, to decrease the intensity of something, I, I've, s I've heard lots of them. From an education perspective, that doesn't make so much sense. Because imagine a situation, especially when it comes to decreasing intensity. So if something is too much for you in-game, you might be emotionally challenged in that moment. You might be even cognitively challenged. It's very hard to remember that one word that you learned two hours ago and not mix it up with the other one from that blurb or whatever. It would make so, so, so much sense if we could agree on a shared set of verbal tools and nonverbal tools that everybody uses. Because if you are in such an emotionally, cognitively challenged situation, you want to have something that you have internalized something that comes automatically, not something that you have, uh, have to search for. Like, like do you, for example, in martial arts, where everybody knows a tap off means stop, enough. So I think if we could maybe use this Knutpunkt, or maybe the next month, to come up with something, something shared, all organizers in this community, that would be really, really helpful, especially for people who often need that and don't find the right words. But okay, I'll, st I'll stop talking about that. You, you, I think you get your <laughs> my idea. Good. So maybe one last word. Um, I've talked about workshops. I said invent your own and make them fit. Um, and it's a lot of work. I know that. But it's worth it. Because what we are doing here, what we are LARP, what the thing we are, we are designing, it's a co-creative medium. So you are not the only one designing the experience. We all know that. And you are the one with the vision, so you have to make sure to communicate your vision and to get everybody on the same page. And that's why workshops are so super important, like that wardrobe, getting you into the magical land. Thank you. <laughs>